When adults talk to us about climate change, these are the messages we hear. Polar bears, polar bears, or polar bears. They're going extinct because of global warming, when the world just gets hotter. The problem is mostly caused by cars. We are in nature, and nature is a danger to us. But don't worry, the little things we do will save us. We can use less toilet paper. Some of these, some of these messages are too simple, and others are simply wrong. We know many people take teachers old enough to understand science, or see the big picture. You don't want to scare us or overwhelm us. The thing is, my generation, generations would inherit this earth and all the problems caused by climate change. We'll be the ones who have to clean up this mess we're going to play. And to prepare for that, we need to know the facts about climate change. So I want to help with this messaging, and that's why I'm here today. I want to point out some of the wrong and wrong ish things kids hear about climate change, and what kids like to be here instead. First of all, don't tell us climate change is global warming. The past winter was confusing for a lot of kids. In previous winters, there wasn't enough snow to go sledding. But this winter, there's record breaking snow in New York and other parts of America. Sometimes it was hotter in Alaska than Texas. And then we read tweets on social media saying things like, Little warming is a hoax, or man, you need a big fat dose of that global warming right now. The reason this is confusing is because we hear the term global warming, and we think the world is only getting hotter. Please teach us that the correct term is not global warming, but climate change or climate chaos. Because science shows that warming is only part of the problem. Teach us how warming the Arctic destabilizes the polar vortex. Uh, we, can, we can notice currents that affect weather everywhere. Temperatures around the world become both hotter and colder, and most of all, extreme and unpredictable. Teach us how climate change causes more heat waves, droughts, wildfires, storm flood, and yes, snowstorms. It's not just global warming, it's global weirdness. Number two. Don't tell us it's only about the polar bears. Look, we get why you use polar bears the poster animals of climate change. They're cute, they make awesome stuffies. But you leave to believe that melting ice cap and starving polar bears are the only problems. And that's just not cool. Polar bears are just the tip of the iceberg. 16,000 non polar not non other species are also the brink of extinction. Teach them about the modern butterfly, the cod, the bees, the coral reef, the insect apocalypse. Teach us what their extinction means to the rest of life on Earth. Talk to us about food webs. But what happens when climate change affects 50% of plants over the next six decades, and how that affects not only the polar bear food supply, but our own. As the biologist E. O. Wilson said, if invertebrates were to disappear, I doubt that human species could last more than a month. Yes, we know 99% of non-polar bear animals are cute or cuddly. We know they don't make good stuffies. But we can't live without them. Number three, don't tell us it's mostly about cars. To me, cars look like evil villains with their gleaming eyes, hulking figures. Which is maybe why you adults constantly blame cars, trucks, trains, and planes for being the primary contributors to climate change. But data from the World Research Institute shows that cars and transportation only 16% of total emissions, the fourth largest source. Teach us how the biggest culprit is industry. Teach us the factories that guzzle more X, that cough up more carbon and more CO2 than the SUV or pickup truck. Teach us about deforestation, about how the largest rainforest in the world is currently being demolished, farmland, pasture, and timber. Teach, teach about industry, about all the, teach about agriculture, about all the resources that go in to make your beef come out. Talk to us about housing and how much research, and how many re, and how many re, uh, and how much energy goes go into heating and cooling buildings. Teach us how the scope of this problem is far beyond transportation. Your steak dinner is likely driving the climate crisis even more than the family car, especially the butter. Number four, don't tell us nature is doing. Ever since we're little, we're told insects are icky, dirt is dirty, don't go into the woods because Lyme disease, don't go into the garden because allergies, look at most, look at me, they're alive. As a result, we expect 
had kids been just seven minutes outdoors, there were seven hours in their screens. We've learned, at least subconsciously, that nature is dangerous to people, just as people are dangerous to nature, that nature and people don't mix. And so I think a lot of kids are fearful of nature, or at least feel distant. We look like funny and funny environments. We don't truly know what it is we're putting for. Please tell me there's more time, out, time outdoors, in forests, fields, mountains, oceans, ponds, greenery. If you do, we feel the climate crisis in a more personal way. Put to the bats and the bees, even the icky insects, and teach us what they do for us. Teach us what's normal in the ecosystem and what's not. Most of all, show us and tell us that people can live in harmony with nature. When it comes to the climate crisis, maybe the way out of the woods is to go into the woods. Number five. Don't tell us that small things alone can save the world. You talk a lot about the reward of doing small things. If you do our laundry, tidy our room, and sweep the floor, we can get a treat. And if you turn off the lights when we leave a room, or on the whole side of paper, teach for showers, and do just one square of toilet paper at a time, we can save the world. And maybe we could if every single kid did these things. We know we need to be less wasteful than you grown ups. And that includes being mindful of the little things. But you need to teach us to think big, too, and to do big things. Please support us in your efforts to change on a large scale, not only writing a little sided paper, but developing sustainable alternatives to free paper. Not only recycling plastics, but passing legislation to replace all plastics with eco-friendly biodegradables. Not only turning to turn off the lights, but to switch every home and factory to renewable energy sources. This is how we decarbonize the world. And we want to learn how to initiate this large scale, top down change. Support us in our activism and hear our voices. Most of all, shh, oh yeah. And support us in our activism and hear our voices. Most of all, and this is really important, please teach us civic from an early age. We kids can learn to affect change from within the system. A lot of schools don't teach how the government works or how the legal system works, how the world works. We don't want to wait. We need to start learning now about what we're fighting to protect and about how to fight for. Bottom line is, let us use all the toilet paper we want because we're going to clean up this mess. Thank you.